In this new social media world, people are eager to cancel anyone who posts a thought that is considered offensive to some degree. Cancel culture can have many definitions. Still, a letter published in Harper's Magazine, signed by 153 writers and intellectuals, defined it as an intolerance of opposing views, a vogue for public shaming and ostracism, and the tendency to dissolve complex policy issues in a blinding moral certainty. Cancel cultists call for swift and severe retribution in response to perceived transgressions of speech and thought, they wrote. Today, we are going to talk about a very sensitive matter. I will be giving you five reasons why cancel culture is toxic. Don't cancel us just yet without watching this video until the end because sometimes cancel culture is more harmful than it helps. First on our list, cancel culture threatens the due process of law. As is known, every country ruled by a government has its justice system. However, no system is without its flaws, and the harsh truth is its imperfection and loopholes sometimes piss people off, leading to them making alternative forms of justice. One good example of this is the so-called trial by publicity, or sometimes trial by media. Trial by media causes people to form a pitchfork mob against someone accused of immorality, regardless if the said person is guilty or not. See, there lies the problem. This makeshift method of justice is not keen on determining whether the accused is guilty or not. It simply proceeds to forming a collective judgment, usually through social media such as Facebook or Twitter, and then hanging the victim. If you look at it, it can be interpreted as the modern-day equivalent of witch hunting. This type of trial is often biased and politicized, and the worst thing about this is the impact that the event has on the receiving end of the cancellation. Most justice systems of the world's countries are built on this principle. We would instead let a guilty person walk free, then let 10 innocent people be imprisoned, or in worst cases, executed. And if the concept of innocent until proven guilty won't be respected anymore, it might change the basis of our justice system. In a sense, it is a subtle form of anarchy being set in motion. Ideally, people should redirect their energy on forming dissent against the flaws of the established justice system, not taking up the law in their own hands. Number two, cancel culture and dangerous free speech. Free speech is both a right and a privilege, and with the proper amount of respect taken into consideration, people can freely express their views and opinions. Should there be a disagreement, Others are likewise free to contradict another statement and ideally create a healthy discourse that could enrich everyone's perspective. And it is fair to say that only by hearing all points of view can one reach their judgment. Speaking of using one's voice to enrich everyone's perspective, did you know that decades ago, workers suffered a 7 to 9 workday? Thanks to a group of people who formed a union and used their right to free speech to speak against the government, this event in history urged Congress and the U.S. to enact labor reforms that provided suitable working conditions for people. Moreover, thanks to the brave suffragettes of the early 20th century that spoke their demands to let women vote. Aside from being a right and a privilege, free speech is necessary for progress. Nowadays, people on social media are exposed to the risk of being cancelled for speaking up about their views. Cancel culture rounds up people of similar points of view in a closed space, forming an echo chamber of their own biased opinions, then attacks people with statements different from theirs. It forces you to conform to their views and be fearful of speaking up on your own. Otherwise, you will be the next victim of their witch hunt. Number 3. Cancel culture restricts creativity. There has been a central question circulating in social media for quite some time now. Should you separate the art from its creator or not? Celebrities, artists, authors, and other creators are more exposed to public scrutiny and are usually the easy target for cancel culture. J.K. Rowling has been canceled for having an alleged transphobic tweet. And there's Lana Del Rey for openly expressing her preference for being submissive in a relationship, which the Twitter stands viewed as an attack on their idea of female empowerment. It may be understandable if someone who enjoyed listening to Bill Cosby growing up doesn't want to listen to him now, 
But there shouldn't be a problem separating an artist's books, movies, humor, art, etc. from their personality and actions. These things are not mutually exclusive. One can separate art from the artist while still examining the artist's character and point of view. Moreover, these things should be considered when investigating art because they are integral to the meaning of the creation. The problem arises when a movement seeks to condemn an artist. It takes away the possibility of future creators to make art within the integrity of their expression. When culture becomes more homogeneous or loses its diversity as a result of culture, art will become more homogeneous. And to tell you honestly, homogeneity does not equal beauty. While singular pieces of art, like books or paintings, are made by a person who may or may not have been horrible, most of the media content we engage with is made by many people. There is no way to determine every artist's moral character, especially in movies and television. Hundreds of people worked in the crimes of Grindelwald, but are we supposed to cancel it because of one of those artists' alleged actions? Who's to say how many misogynists or racists helped in the creation of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? There is no correlation between being a good person and having talent. Throughout history, there have been jerks behind some of the most outstanding achievements of humanity. Art itself is subjective and meant to be interpreted and enjoyed. And ideally, it stands on its own, free of the baggage of its creators. No matter how controversial, Art should be preserved. When cancel culture seeks to destroy the reputations of artists, it damages the collective body of art. Number 4. Cancel culture hurts more people than it reforms. As explained by psychologist and author Kimberly Wilson, fundamentally, cancel culture is about shame. Shame emerges in response to the feeling that we have transgressed against some agreed social rule and lost status within the group. Shame, as claimed by evolutionary psychologists, played a role in humanity's survival, as doing a shameful act can get you expelled from your tribe and be forced to attempt to survive alone. While being excluded from society for doing something viewed as unacceptable is a risk throughout history, while we have always called out injustices, the mob justice brought upon by cancel culture degrades people's mental health. Social media has democratized shaming. We can all shame anyone we like, simultaneously expanding its reach, stripping away any mitigating or humanizing context, and leaving a permanent paper trail of what might have been a momentary indiscretion, says Wilson. The psychologist believes one of the most significant mental health risks of online canceling is the pile-on. The fact that within minutes, a person could be verbally attacked by thousands of people. For the canceled person, it can feel as though the whole world is attacking them. For the spectators, it's inevitable to get the feeling that you might be next. Cancel culture is anonymous, fueled by mob mentality, and immensely polarizing. I am right. You are wrong. It forces people to stop supporting someone that does something the mob does not agree with. The idea is, if a person is canceled, they are finished. There are no gray areas. The whole act of this witch burning is well documented and preserved on the internet for everyone to see and revisit any time. While calling out wrong actions might be necessary, a culture that encourages people to be quick to cancel and reluctant to forgive is dangerous. Cancel culture often denies the canceled individual the most basic of human opportunities. To apologize and to be absolved, explains Wilson. Because the indignant mob blocks the road to redemption. A quick apology is viewed as insincere, a slow one as being issued under duress, and the matter can still be resurrected sometime in the future. Cancel culture, by denying people the opportunity to admit their wrongdoings and demonstrate remorse, disregards our imperfect nature and hinders our growth potential. And number five, cancel culture forces you into fear and conformity. Because of cancel culture, Many of us feel like we have to tiptoe around social media. This goes back to the point about how the movement is threatening free speech. No one will speak their minds in fear of being cancelled, and free speech will be limited. 
the number of different viewpoints will diminish and society will be forced to conform to a specific standard, one that is set and approved by the mob. It is a bland standard where no one states their genuine opinions and ultimately, everyone will thrive in fear. While cancel culture as a movement can effectively calm sexism, racism, or any other type of harmful wrongdoing to others, it can also be destructive and toxic in a lot of ways. Probably more dangerous than helpful. What are your thoughts when it comes to cancel culture? Have you ever canceled someone due to opposing views? Let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notifications to get front row seats to watch Canon's mind-blowing videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.